Okay guys, so today we are checking out four beautiful knives. These are customs. Now, I do want to tell you guys that they are for sale and I will link the site down below in the description. Now, another thing is that the guy who's running this site, me and him are putting together a, a site for ourselves so that we can uh, start dealing knives and start getting knives in. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get some of my own designs on there and things like that. So I'm just giving you guys a little rundown of what's happening. You know, it, it's obviously in the very beginning, so things are just starting to start moving. So just giving you guys a heads up that soon I will have a, a knife site for you to buy knives. Let's check these knives out. So the first one is a Julian Klein Outpost. It's called the Outpost. Now I've never tried any of these makers. So, you know, first time getting to check them out. We have an S45 drop point dual ground Tonto. So it has a hollow here and a flat here. And then actually it has a hollow on the spine too. And it's gonna be hard to come over the camera, but it actually has micro milling on the spine right there in that hollow section. Um, which is very cool. Micro milling on the handles and on the, the black zirconium clip. So yes, that is a black zirconium clip and it has micro milling on it. Um, and then, you know, it obviously is a titanium frame lock with front flipping action and the whole deployment. Now, both deployments are really good because this thing has a very clean breaking detent, a very satisfying breaking detent. Um, it was the first thing I noticed right away was that detent. Um, it is super snappy. You wouldn't expect this front flipper to be super, super good, but it actually is. Great jimping, great texturing. Like I said, the detent just, it breaks like right at the right time. Um, so it's very easy to use. Now the whole deployment, same thing. You know, you can use just the skin of your finger or you can use your nail. Both work really good. Um, obviously you can thumb flick it, but again, it has just a nice breaking clicky detent. Um, I do notice one thing right away is that it's slim. That's the, that's actually the first thing I noticed was right away was after I opened it up was how slim it is. It is very slim in the hand. Um, you know, it's not a big knife. It's more of a compact knife, but you can get a full grip. The lock bar is pushed under there pretty tight, kind of like a Sabenza's lock up, which I don't mind. Um, it's not lock stick. It's just tight. So what I like about that is that it reassures me that the lock engagement is nice and strong. Um, but anyways, um, it, it doesn't, you know, like I said, it's not lock stick. It's just, you know, when you unlock it, you're kind of pushing the lock bar out from underneath it and you can feel it's wedged under there. Um, but yeah, very cool though. You know, um, like I said, this is the first time I'm getting to try some of his work. And, you know, like I said, if you uh, want to purchase that knife or whatever, check out the site in the description. Next is... I think this one's my favorite one. Um, I'll just show it right now. This one kind of reminds me of the Rosies, the Roosevelt's. Now I'm not trying to compare it to a Roosevelt or anything like that, but it has this, this such a snappy detent that it's, uh, it's super satisfying. CTS XHP steel. Beautiful milling. Look at this micro milling on the front. It's like cross hatched. It has a nice texturing on it. Do we have um, beautiful, I think it's anodized, yeah, titanium hardware that's anodized. And then it has a very, very minimal flipper tab that works super good. Like this thing, man, this detent. That, that's what reminds me of the Roosevelt is this detent. Now I know the Roosevelt uses a, a two detent balls uh, as their detent, but it's just that that crispy breaking action is so clean. Um, even from the flipper tab, fantastic flipping action. Now this hand rubbed set and CTX XHP blade has a drop point dual ground. So it has a hollow here and a flat here, but then it also has a hollow swedge going down to the tip, making the tip very pokey and precise. 
Um, but this is a, a great size. It's a little compact knife, but it's perfect size for fidgeting and also a perfect size for being, you know, a useful knife design. You can hear the detent when it clicks back in. Very nice. Now you can also use it lefty. If you are a lefty, this one's actually pretty easy to use lefty. So a lot of, um, you know, the clip doesn't move. So you can't, not nah, it doesn't move. The clip doesn't move over to the other side. So, you know, you do have to take that into consideration, but if you don't mind that and you're a lefty, this thing, it, it works great for a lefty. Uh, but yeah, this one's just, it's super cool. It's very well done. I can feel this thing, you know, is very high quality. Um, the the lockup is nice and solid. The disengagement is, is not uncomfortable to disengage. You can hear the lock part when it engages. Listen to that. Gotta love that. You can really feel that lock bar just pulling, especially if it, when it jumps off of the detent ball. Bam, I love that. So yeah, this one's pretty cool. I like this one quite a bit. Um, what is it, 2.6 inch blade, 6.2 inches overall. Um, like I said, full titanium and CTS XHP steel. Let's get to the next. Now the next one is probably the most expensive of the bunch, and this is by Sean O'Connell. And it is in MagnaCut Core Sanmai Steel. You can see it is a sand my blade. I do not know the HRC. I think it's 62, but I'm not 100%. Don't quote me. It is a hollow ground drop point blade with a sand my magma cut blade. Man, this thing, beautiful blade. And you can see that Damascus, gorgeous Damascus. Then we have a zirconium show side. And I, I, hopefully it'll come over the, the, the camera, but if you look around the edges of the holes, they're like jimped. It looks really cool with the way it plays with the light. It has that little bit of texturing around there. It is contoured. Um, this is probably the smoothest disengagement knife I've ever felt because you have so much access right here. It's very, very comfortable to disengage. Then we have a, uh, I think it's a black Timascus uh, clip. But anyways, um, well, let me see. Titanium lock panel scale and heavy polymer. Zirconium show, so it doesn't say, oh, just dark tie. So it, it's a Timascus clip, dark Timascus. And then you also have a floating Timascus backspacer, as you can see there. Um, now it is on washers and it has a hole deployment. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a front flipper, but it does work. We'll talk about that in a second. But the hole deployment, you can reverse flick it. You can thumb flick it. Like I said, that disengagement is so smooth. And when you disengage it, it just drops. But then it stops because it is on washers. Now you can obviously, that's my fault. You can obviously let it drop and then slap it down, you know, or, you know, try to overcome the, the resistance of the lock bar. Um, but, but that's basically what it is because when you release the lock bar, you see how smooth it just drops. So once the lock bar tension gets back on there, that's when it's almost like a Sabenza. That's the way it kind of feels more like a Sabenza action. Um, not that you have to slow roll it. You can flick it, but I'm just saying that it, uh, it has that, um, that tight, smooth, glassy, uh, feeling in the pivot where it's like, frictionless you don't obviously you don't feel bearings because there isn't bearings so we have jimping right there now like i said i'm not sure if this was intended to be a front flipper but it does work as a front flipper and you can do it basically in every angle um the jimping is very well done um and, and you know yeah like i said these are handmade these are custom knives now i will say there's one little negative on this one um and that is the edge. The edge is not, I mean, I can tell it's a fixed angled edge, but it looks like, you know, like back here was missed a little bit. It's gonna be hard to come over the camera, but I can just see little spots that could have been done better. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, this is a very expensive knife. Um, 
So I'm just gonna say, if somebody happens to purchase it, I, I will, if, as long as it's within like the next week or two, I will put my own edge on there and try to get it um, as good as possible for you. Um, now the edge is extremely sharp. It does not need my edge. I mean, it is very, very sharp. This would be a, a just fine, uh, perfectly dandy edge, but you know, um, it could look a little bit better as far as back here and maybe a little bit at the tip. Sharpness wise, it's very well done. Nice, nice toothy um, polished edge. So, um, and you know, being Magna Cut, Magna Cut does usually do pretty good with a polished edge. Um, but all in all, man, it is really cool. This one is a nice full size knife. Um, you know, zirconium is very heavy, but it has all those holes in there. So you do notice the weight quite a bit. Not that it's a super heavy knife or anything. Um, there is the little card that comes with it. But yeah, very, very cool. And uh, like I said, link down in the description for you guys. Now the last one is from JK Knives. Now this isn't the JK Knives that I um, <clears throat> featured on the channel already. This is a guy who does Bala songs. Now, if you go on to Arizona Custom Knives, you'll see there's a bunch of them on there. Um, this one in particular, I'm not sure the exact price of this one. The ones on, uh, it's definitely probably over $1,000, uh, but because I can see on Arizona Customs, those are all over $1,000. Now, the blade steel, I'm not 100% what the blade steel is. Um, I'll put it on the screen. Anyways, so I'm not like a, a great bala songer or anything like that, so I wanna make that clear. I do like Bally's. I do have a couple of them, a few of them, but I'm not like an expert with them. But I will say this one is by far the smoothest and best sounding Bally song I've ever experienced. It has such a cool sound to it. You can hear the titanium, because this is all titanium. Um, obviously titanium backspacers. There's heavy milling on the inside, so it's super lightweight for the size. Like, it's shockingly light. Um, the, 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 the blade has these dual grinds, so it has a hollow here with this beautiful micro milling. Hopefully it'll come over the camera. And then it has a micro milled flat ground up here near the, the nose of the Tonto. This is a slight recurve. Then, it, you know, the the tip has a nice swedge on it that is a hollow swedge. This blade is pretty wicked. It's pretty damn cool. I like it. But, uh, but swinging it around, you know, even for somebody who's not like that experienced with the battle song, I can tell, I can feel that this is very high quality and that if somebody was a pro with it, they would... Uh, be very, very good with it. Um, I, I think anybody who's really good with ballast songs would grab this and would know right away, like, yeah, that's a high-end ballast song. You know, um, obviously it's on bearings. I can see the bearings in there. It's got to be bearings, uh, but because it's just so, so smooth. And then, like I said, the sound, it, it's almost like it floats. Like there's no friction at all. As far as rattle and tap, very, very little side to side. Um, no rattle and tap when you shake it. Um, solid when it's open. Um, no shifting. So, man, it's pretty damn solid. But like I said, these are very expensive ballast songs. So you got to really like ballast songs to, to, to invest in something like this. But when you go to Blade Show, you realize how many ballast song nuts there are. Um, and I like ballast songs, but man, they're... There's some guys out there that are just diehard Bala Song fans. And yeah, so there you guys go. Like I said, everything will be linked down in the description. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.